Welcome to the Travel Ones Podcast. Today, my guest is Lindsay Haygood. How are you, Lindsay? I'm great, Pete. How are you doing? Doing very well. I appreciate it. Appreciate the time today. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you for your time. Oh, no, absolutely. I'm wearing a shirt <laughs> specifically for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is so sweet. You're going to make me cry. I didn't even notice it. <laughs> I know, right? A little gratitude. That's what we need. Thank you. Yes, we do. <laughs> I don't know exactly how to describe your current status. Other, So you're a fitness, okay. you're a model, you're, you worked a lot. And then I did. You had I issues. did. So, yes, I did. So my career, my 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 past career was I was a professional editorial and print model and I was signed with agencies and I also was signed with trade show agencies. Right. So I was really into the entertainment field and I worked as a brand ambassador, a product demonstrator, a product specialist. And um, six years ago, I went in for a surgery that I had to have and I, I came out of surgery gravely ill and it literally knocked me off of the stage of my profession and my career. So during the course um, and tenor of my recovery, I launched a little blog called Live Inspired Through Faith and Fitness. And it just really helps me focus in on faith and fitness. That's how I got well through all of my hospital crisis and all my medical emergencies and really just kind of shifted the focus from what I was going through and focusing in on the well-being of other people. Yeah. But in the midst of all of it, it helped me from illness to wellness. And it really ins aspired to inspire me to help other people. So fast forward, like with what is my title? I was thinking about that the other day. What do yeah. I even do? Well, I'm the founder of Live Inspired Through Faith and Fitness. Um, I just went back to, I, I, I've never done this. I just, um, I, I launched Lindsay Haygood LLC. And I thought, you know, I'm a certified life coach and a certified motivational speaker. What a better thing to do than for me to work on my platform yeah. and speaking on behalf of my tragedy from, from tragedy to triumph and helping other people. And so I'm in the health and wellness industry and fitness and help people with fitness challenges and their health and fitness. And now I'm branching off into getting my leadership certification and uh, really pursuing that um, as I'm about to come out in a book as a co-author. And I have aspirations to write even my own story and self-publish. So I and guess you that's why say, I let you say all that. <laughs> yeah, because it's a lot. So what am I? I'm an, op I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a motivational yeah. speaker and life coach. And that makes it simple. That just simplifies it all. <laughs> yeah, into a lot. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, it is a lot. It's a mouthful, right? <laughs> exactly. Wait, you know, I, I know you, you, I mean, you had some traveling for, for your work before, but then even huh? with your illness, you had to travel quite a bit. So. Yes. Uh huh. I, I, I want to talk about uh, fitness for, for people that travel for work. And, and oh, I yeah. That's well, that's really good. Yeah, no, that's an excellent question. So when I was traveling with work, let's say, for example, I went to Alaska eight times in two and a half months. And I was just like away from the gym, you know, you're on the road, you're traveling, you're, you're eating par diem food that they, you know, give you like, yeah. how do you make this, this lifestyle? And what I would do when I was traveling is I would um, pack those resista bands, you know, you've seen the little rubber kinds. Yep. They also have the fabric ones that are out now, but um, this was back in 2010 when I was really traveling a lot from 2010 to up till 2016. And so I just packed the resista bands. I also did the tube ones, you know, the tube ones that you yeah. can get like at the, at the stores. Yep. Yeah. And then I would just do a, um, I'm old school. So I would have my notepad and I would like, you know, chart and target like upper body today, lower body and core work. And I would just stretch inside um, my hotel room or I would go outside, um, not in the lobby, but, you know, a lot of the places that we would stay at, they would have like conference areas yeah. or like um, like an eating area. But there was always like a carpet area where I could stretch or do my workout and whatnot. And that's how I did it when I was on the road. Um, as far as fitness was concerned and then nutrition, you know, it was just getting good at knowing what to eat and what not to eat. And it's really hard because when you're on the road, you just want everything inside and they provide us with such great meals. Yeah. I, I, I think that you've done a lot of trade shows in your past. So, you know, the, the sure food have. that they, that, you know, they have donuts and cakes and they have uh, well, big, huge sandwiches. They put out things that, that won't spoil so fast. But unfortunately, yeah. they're not 
fresh <laughs> no, <laughs> or they have preservatives no. or whatever. So yeah, they're, they're not, not always I the would, best thing I would you. pack my protein bars and I would pack like little snack, um, like little nut snacks and stuff. But yeah. That was back when travels were easy. They didn't like monitor your yeah. food and you had to put it through a scanner and them see now they check everything. It's just insane. So I try not to go with my food bag anymore because it's just, it gets too complicated. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to ask you because, you know, for me, as long as my voice works, I can still do my day job. That's yes. all I need, right? But right. As, as a fit model, you know, and a mm -hmm. trade show ambassador and all that brand ambassador, I mean, uh -huh. they were hiring you because of your look. Right, so, like, right. It didn't matter if you were bloating that week or you didn't feel good or this happened right. or that. I mean, you had to maintain your your physical shape mm -hmm. as well as your your you know voice and everything. Right. How? I mean, was that a lot of pressure? You know what? Looking back on it, it was. Um, uh, it was, but it wasn't because I wasn't a bikini model. So. No. I was more of a marketer model or a presenter. Right. But um, I think for me. But your appearance was still <laughs> important. Yes, it was. And yeah, so to a certain degree, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I had to watch what I ate, you know, and, and I was really a stickler about eating super healthy, like eating balanced proteins and balanced carbohydrates and balanced fats. But I'm not going to lie. I did have a candy bar. Yeah, yeah. I did have a milkshake. I did have a donut. <laughs> it's just everything in moderation, sure. especially when you're on the road. You know, you, you've got to watch what you eat. You are what you eat, as they say. And it is true. So true. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you know, un unfortunately. Or... Unfortunately, right? I was just telling, I was just telling my wife that I said, I feel so, I, when I'm at home, I can, I really control what I eat a lot better. And when I get uh -huh. on the road, it's like, okay, well, let me just go here. Let me just, I ah, just, I want to eat. like anything yeah. goes and we're not monitoring it. And we're not yeah. really, not that we're counting calories, but we're just not cognizant of what we're really putting in our mouths. We're so focused and busy that it's just like grabbing something on the, on the road. Yeah, I, I know before I noticed it, I've had a bag of popcorn snacks. Then I've had a, a protein bar. Then I had like a meal meal. And I'm like, how am I gaining all this weight? Uh, that's why, because of all the snacking oh, in between. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Right. And when you notice that too, your yeah, shirts well, are a little bit more too tight. <laughs> No comment. Ah! <laughs> no comment. Okay. But but yes, you know it. it like I said, it, you know, you said it perfectly. It's like when I'm on the road, you know, I, I just pick up a snack at the when I fill up to get gas. I'll just go get some snacks, and then I'm just for an hour and a half of driving just snacking. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. I think it's just learning how to eat better, good choices, and just being smart with what we're eating and what we're putting in our mouths and that will make it a little bit easier, especially for people who travel on the road. I mean, I'm sure everybody listening to this can co completely relate. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. Let me go get that hot dog. No, stop now. Why you uh, can't. I know I'm supposed to get the bag of almonds, but uh, <laughs> the, the, the gas station pizza slice is really calling my name. right? Oh now. my God. You're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got the almonds, <laughs> but you got the pizza instead. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm learning. I love it, especially as I get older. Like when I was younger, my you know, even my 30s, 40s, I was like, I was still burning. You know, I was still. Yeah, our metabolism boy. slows down as we get older. We'll yeah. say younger as we get young, younger. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I get, I get my uh, my senior discount in three months. So. Oh yeah. my god, are you kidding me, Pete? You yeah. don't look old enough for that. 55 yeah you start, oh my I get, gosh I get to go is that sen when it starts senior living i can do uh <laughs> i get i get the senior discount at denny's i can do a whole bunch oh of my stuff god there. i've got four years to go i can't wait <laughs> you, got, you, you got time you're a youngin you're a youngin i love it i love yeah. it <laughs> now i was gonna ask you i know you got really really ill uh-huh so coming out of that you know, did you learn more fitness and more like, I mean, were the doctors like, here's, here's what you should be eating or, or, or you, you know what? No, own? no, they never talked to me about food and nutrition. And that's a really great conversation, a very great question, you know, reflecting back on it. 
I just remembered I was so sick and I was so excited to see the chef that came every day into the hospital and asked me what I wanted. And I always wanted the blueberry pancakes, but no, they never gave me a um, nutrition or fitness um, list. Uh, they never talked to me about that. You know, everything's kind of a little fuzzy as I'm reflecting back right now. I just remembered we were so focused on my recovery. We were so focused on me overcoming the, the cross-contamination. Um, and it actually was from breast implant poisoning. It was a contaminated, infected breast implant. I had had reconstructive surgery for many, many years. And uh, I had had some issues. And so I had them removed and they wanted to replace them and I didn't want them replaced. And yeah. my, my surgeon, unfortunately, he opened me up on the surgery table and subjected me to bacteria staphylococcus, MRSA, cytosurgery, surgery and sepsis wow. shot poisoning. So I was gravely, gravely ill. And so all I can remember right now with telling you that mouthful was the primary focus was infectious disease care. I was in long term CDC care for so long, like 28 months. I'm just, um, That's insane. I was back into infectious disease care this past holiday because of a virus. It wasn't COVID. It was some said virus coupled in with the MRSA. Cause once you get connected with that type of bacteria infection, you'll always be a carrier. But going back to your question, they never talked about fitness and nutrition. It was, we were so focused on my recovery. I was so sick. You know, you have to remember I had two back-to-back -back emergency surgeries and I was yeah. bedridden for six months. And the second emergency surgery, I had a, a, almost a three inch hole below my breast. So I was in a burn wound unit for a really long time, going back and forth to the hospital, getting packing and this huge hole. We had to let it close up before I could travel, but I was so weak. Um, so basically I just like crawled down the hallway, true story, yeah. got on a recumbent bike and just pedaled one pedal at a time. My intuition knew what I needed to eat. My intuition knew I needed movement. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> I can just remember it like yesterday and I was so alone in this, this crazy crisis because my family lived in Texas. Yeah. I was so confused what was happening, Pete, that people were like burning up my phone and calling me, but I just pushed everyone away. I don't know if you've ever been through such a medical crisis or an illness, but when you're sick, you just kind of push everybody away. And it was just me and God against this gigantic monster to get better. But my body and my mind and my spirit knew what to eat how to move, how to get up. Um, it, that's interesting. My doctors never asked me. They yeah. never gave me a list about healthy eating. They never set me up with a nutritionist, nothing. I think their main goal is just to get you well and get out of there, you know? And well, I, I, <laughs> this is just my opinion, of course. Right. I, I, I'm always surprised, like, you, because you inherently knew because of your background how to eat right. and exercise, but I feel bad for the people that go through something similar to you. And yeah. they don't know. So, you know, are they still eating the crappy, sugary, Probably. processed foods while they're trying to recover and their bodies? Just, Absolutely. You're just Absolutely. shocking their body. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, um, through my recovery, you know, my background is personal training and yeah. uh, fitness, fitness teaching. And that that's what led me into speaking and modeling and all of that. And so I trained hundreds and hundreds of people, if not thousands of people every year. And I really focused on good nutrition and, um, you know, like basic one-on-one nutrition and fitness and health, like movement, like get walking and get moving. But to answer your question, yeah, I have talked to many people since then as yeah. being a health and fitness advocate. And many of them struggle with that. Like Lindsay, what am I supposed to do? And so I kind of guide and direct them on what they need to eat, what they should do, how they can recover, especially the women with the breast implant illness and silicone poisoning, our adrenal fatigue, our adrenal glands are so shut down. You know, we have to juice or I, I juiced and, yeah. you know, I was recommended to do an incredible juice by a friend of mine that went to a doctor in Las Vegas. That was a naturopathic. And I was studying to be a holistic fitness practitioner anyway. So I just, 
I think my timing of getting sick and me having this huge background in health and fitness just really was yeah. a was a massive plus and benefit to me. But now I help other people like what you're saying, what did they do? And I have yeah. tons of people that reach out to me because I'm starting to share my story. I've been sharing my story over the couple of the years. And mind you, it hasn't been it's a glamorous story. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, painful because it happened to me and it was very personal and it's embarrassing. You know, I found it embarrassing. I found it uh, humiliating. I didn't have this incredible breast boob job story. God, I wish I did. <laughs> I was a recovering breast prosthesis patient that got coupled into a massive reconstructive mess yeah. like 14 years ago. And then everything was fixed. It was my secret. Nobody even knew. None of my friends even knew about the breast implants. They were like, Oh, what? And when somebody tagged me in silicone poisoning, I just thought, Oh my God, let me just hide right now. And then I got connected to the women amazing, amazing women with the breast implant illness community and a lot of sick women and a really sick industry as far as the medical, you know, yeah. the medical, they know, they know what's going on with these devices. So going back to health and fitness and the topic of nutrition, I now help and advocate for people who you're asking about, how do they do it? I put out my services out there. A lot of times I'm volunteering for free. I just, I'm here to help. You know, we're here in this lifetime to help people not hurt them. Okay. And, and by me finding this blog, Live Inspired Through Faith and Fitness, I keep going back to that because it was really my anchor through the storm with God and, and with my beliefs, with my fitness and my health nutrition. And, and again, I'm certified, very, very well certified, like 11 times certified in the industry. I'm so grateful and in gratitude, like your shirt says, for just the experience and the knowledge of knowing what I needed to do in mind, body, and spirit. And now I can help other people do the same. And hopefully I'm able to help a lot of people. Well, maybe that's. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's that why was I was given this crazy, that's right. this crazy ordeal, right? Like you, this crazy you, journey. <laughs> and maybe that's why you came out of it. So you yes. can go on and help people. I do. I believe that. I believe yeah. that, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's interesting, Pete, because I have people ask me all the time. They don't even ask me, Lindsay, what did you learn from it? It's more questions of how did you do it? How did you get well? How did you go from illness to wellness? And so now I'm just really focusing on that, how I can yeah. help them through fitness and nutrition information, not so much showing them in videos and stuff, but like, you know, I'm even thinking about collaborating an ebook and telling them this is how I did it. This is what I recommend. And hopefully maybe this can help you. And so it's been an interesting journey. Um, but my, my recovery has really helped. It's really come from helping other people. And I just feel so blessed to have a positive attitude. I mean, somebody said, Lindsay, where do you get it all from? It's not that easy. I'm not going to sit here and lie. I've You've got had days. some rough times. Pete, some days we, I we, we've talked. <laughs> I wake up, we have you and I are such dear friends. And I just want to tell you, thank you too, over the years, just connecting oh, and sure, checking man. on me. I remembered you reaching out to me. Um, I remember every conversation almost that we've had and, you know, are you well, is everything okay? I remember a like story with your wife. Yes. Yes. So I'm yeah. here to help other people, especially with their nutrition and, and fitness, because if we don't have that, if we don't have our health, we don't have our life. We, you know, I remember my team of doctors just saying, yeah. Lindsay, you've got all this knowledge. You're doing so great. Just go live, just go live. And I was like, okay. So okay. she did. <laughs> and, and you're doing, I mean, you didn't exactly have, uh, a, a spouse or partner support. No, no, that kind of, that I don't. I'm single. He, well, I've he, never been married. I don't he, have he, any he, children. Is this he, crazy? He, the, 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 I remember you tell me, I, I, I'm just sharing this because a, a lot of people, like, like I would support Wendy if something happened to her and she would support right? me. Right, right. You, your support bounced on you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it, it did. I was like, I just had me, myself, and I. That was who, that was it. Yeah. So, that's what you call it. I like that. Bounced on me, like bounced on me, and I bounced back. <laughs> well, yeah, you got no choice. So. No, but I didn't have any choice, and I wanted to be well too. So, man, it, it's made me stronger than I've ever imagined. But yeah. yeah, no, no support. Just the man upstairs and my own belief system. Of course, family, friends yeah, like you and, reaching yeah. out to me, my mom, my family, you, Pete. 
very, very good friends. But as far as physical support inside of the home, yeah. nope. Last I checked, it's just me. Check, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, I, I, so I hopefully, if, if anyone hears this and they're going through issues and they have a support system, be thankful mm -hmm. for it because yes, and if and you don't, you can still get through it. Yep. Yes, yes. And you know, I had home health care. I had great insurance and I remembered home health care coming. I always want to call them hospice. No, it wasn't yeah. that bad. But I remembered it was, I was so delusional in my mind. I was like, oh, mom, hospice is here today. And I'm at this hotel and I was like in my house, but you know, you're so crazy in your head and loopy from the drugs and the anesthesia and the antibiotics. But I had home health care for six months and they came in. I remember three times a week because I had drains and I had to go back and forth and had those removed. And I even called one of them, Sally. I remembered whipping her around up in the air. Right. Oh, Sally, right? <laughs> you got to have fun with it. Hey, I learned, you know, my mom told me a long time ago, actually through a massive breakup, Lindsay, it's all in your perspective. It's all in your attitude. And I was just like, say what? Excuse me? F, F you. Yeah. But, it, but no, no, no. So fast forward, I remember that making me so mad. So when I was really sick, all I remembered was those words. It's on your perspective. It's on your attitude. You've got this, you know, keep going. And um, I really just think that that that's what kind of just kept me going. Even being by myself, you almost kind of have to coach and cheerlead yourself or you'll just go, you'll go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. And hopefully, you know, with, with putting your story out there more publicly, more people will be able to, to reach out to you if they don't have someone. You know, yes, I, I hope so. And I'm making myself available and I'm glad we're doing this interview yeah. right now because, you know, with the travel wins and with like fitness, like how you're traveling and if people are overcoming illness to wellness or like a story like mine, I'm here to help, you know, reach out to me. I'd be glad to, um, to assist in any manner that I can give them advice as long as it's not medical advice because yeah. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to touch that. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm available for people. And um, I hope that I can aspire to inspire them as they aspire to inspire me. You well, know? And, and if you start doing more public speaking and you can, you know, that I think personally, uh -huh. that means a lot, but I, I think the, <laughs> it does. The, it I does. think the public thank speaking you. is perfect for you. I, you're well, good in thank public. You. You're, you're thank used to being you. in front of a camera, in front of people. Yes. It's, it's a, a heartfelt motivational story that you're sharing. Thank you, Pete. Um, Thanks. It could be a yeah. Good, that's the route All that I'm purpose. really pursuing right now. Yeah, thank you so much. And so that's really the route that I'm pursuing right now. And um, I literally just signed up with the John Maxwell team to get my leadership certification because okay. I do see myself on the stage. I have been asked to speak on, on public on the stage. I'm not quite ready yet. You know, that whole thing kind of took me aback and I'm just kind of trying to get back in the camera yeah. and get back feeling comfortable in front of people. But I know if I come from a pay place of gratitude, and um, just being my authentic self, I yeah. think it's relatable. You know, people can relate and they won't be so like, oh, my God, here's this model and she's in heels. And well, my hair is puffed up today. I did it on purpose because I wanted to look beautiful, but it's usually in a braid. You know, I live at the beach, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I do have my kicks on. So I've got just kind of like a new vibe and a new look. And I thought, well, with this rebranding, like, what am I going to do with my life? I'm going to speak. This is how it's going to be. I'm going to tell this tragic story and do a twist with this humor because, you know, we yeah. have to have humor in, in crisis situations, regardless of whatever crisis it is we have to find the sunlight we have to find the sun light through what is it through the forest you know the yeah. trees you know sure. it's there's not going to be darkness for long but it was a very very dark time for me and i'm just glad that i'm coming out i feel like i'm back out on top like i'm having this massive comeback but yeah. what's this comeback you know and i think it's just being alive and and making myself available for those who are hurting, you know, to where I can help heal them and help to kind of navigate through their charters of murky waters per se, 
of maybe their journey is kind of similar and they're having a really bad time. I mean, I had nobody there for me. Right. My, my family was so inundated with their own issues. My mom was overcoming her own surgery prior to mine. She's got animals. She has dogs. My sister has animals. She has dogs. She was working three jobs. My nieces are so young. It's not like they could fly or, 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 or drive to me. So it was all me, like just trying to figure out this crazy journey. And, um, I made it <laughs> here. I am. I'm still sitting Boom. today. Boom. I'm surviving. I'm thriving. I don't really like to say surviving. I'm thriving. I'm an overcomer and I'm just here to connect now with other people yeah. and, and hopefully be able to help them. And I'm glad that you asked me, you know, or you told me public speaking would be a great navigation journey and way for me right now because that's really what i'm pursuing so so thank you very much yeah. i appreciate it <laughs> you should look into the tedx programs oh okay great well that's really interesting that you said that so i am i'm looking into that right now oh good and i'm about to be a co-author in a book that's going to be published in about two months with blue it's business life universe and they it's kind of like blue talks meets chicken soup oh, for the soul okay. Yeah. And so they just kind of did this interview with me a couple of weeks ago and, and it's about to come out. The book is it's volume six and I'll have to keep you updated yeah. with it when it comes out. Absolutely. But um, the last one just went international bestseller. And I'm like, what does that mean? And they're like, well, if this one goes international bestseller, you and 15 other people are co-authors of that. And it's a pretty incredible thing. And I'm like, wow, but I'm more interested in just sharing the story and sharing the passion and drive of how I got blessed through the storm, how I am just in, in immersed in immense gratitude and so grateful for my life and um, overcoming really a huge medical crisis because it was it was pretty, pretty rough, pretty nasty and rough for a really long time. And it I'm hoping it's. Behind me. Say, fortunately and unfortunately, you shared a lot of the photos. Was, yes, was, I yes, I did. Pretty and I real. Have been, yes, and I have been doing that. And you know, it's really interesting. I, I I was I was nervous about that, but I think a picture says a thousand words. Yeah. I'm gonna cry. I just you all good. It's been so hard for me because it's um not something that I wanted. I didn't yeah. want this to be my story, but somehow it became it my story yeah. and I'm just making the best of it. Like I'm just a girl just trying, I'm trying to get ahead in life. I've been out of work for six years by divine <laughs> intervention. I've been so blessed to not my full-time job has been my recovery. So that has been my job, but I'm yeah. so blessed that I've been able financially to be supportive by my family and dear friends and those who have come to help me in my time of need. But now it's like, it's time for me to get back in it. It's time for me to throw the ball and chain over my shoulders and lead with impact and lead with passion and share these tragic pictures, but show this story of triumph from this, this tragedy, because there's so many people in the world that are overcoming stuff. We all have a story. Yeah. But how many people are really sharing it? How many people are really diving into it and really embracing overcoming that emotional, mental turmoil that comes with it? Because it's been a lot. So, I, you know, it's, what's interesting for me is, and, and I use this a lot in, my, in many instances, but like I, I look at your pictures and, 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 you know, I've obviously followed your story and all that. And Thank I, and, you. And, and I, I, I go, man, it sucks what I'm going through, but whew, it's all comparative, <laughs> right? So I think yes, you, you help yes, people. You, yes. Your story is helping people. I mean, everyone can complain about, ah, oh, I got to drive over here and oh, I got to send traffic today or oh, the weather's this or that, you know, man, it could be a lot worse. It, it, it can be. be. And when I see other people's stories too, yeah. and, and I see what they're going through, I have incredible empathy, but I forget about my story because I've seen worse stories and yeah. I'm just like, Oh my God, these people. And I know their vigor and I know their, their tenaciousness of just trying to show up, just showing up day in and day out. Like I type to tell people show up in the gym day out, day in and day out, show up, and move, whether you're swimming, yoga, biking, stretching, walking, anything. walking yeah. just do it. Just get up out of that wheelchair, get off of that walker, get off of that sofa, move, 
we were born to move. You know, yeah. I love my favorite thing is like, use it to lose it. <laughs> and I really used it during my tragedy of laying in the bed. I was so sick. I mean, so filled with poisons. I couldn't even comprehend it all. And I just remembered talking to God, like, come on, just get me to move, just get my legs up, just get me out of this bed. And, yeah. you know, if it's one thing that I can tell people, if you're sick or you're going through something that has change the course of your journey in life with walking or movement or your physical, your physicalities of your body, get up and make it happen. Walk, get up and move, just do it because laying in bed. Yes, we need rest. Yes. We heal when we rest, yeah. but we also heal when we start to live again, we can't just lay there like a vegetable and not move unless we really are in a vegetative state state, or we've sure. had some type of brain injury. There's certain circumstances that are not even relatable to this conversation. It's on a whole different level. And God bless those people because I've even been working with some of them. I, I've got a friend of mine right now whose daughter has a traumatic brain injury. And all we can do is pray. You can't even preach to these people. They have to want this desire. But I remembered picking up the phone and leaving her messages. You yeah. know, Nasaya, Nasaya, you know that you want to walk. You want to get out of the hospital. Your family members are there. Are you ready? And then their family members called and said, Lindsay, she was listening to your message and her feet started moving. And I said, it's not just because of me. It's a whole pool of people Everything, praying. Yeah. But she's walking now and she is at home and she's got... I mean, it just gives me the goosebumps because again, I'm shifting my focus from what I've been through and focusing it on helping another person. Yeah. And uh, thank you for telling me that. Yeah. Hopefully my story can inspire another person. And they're like laying in the bed, like, Oh my God, I want to get out of bed too. Yes, I, they can that, do it. <laughs> that's really why I start, started the podcast, you know, in a lot of ways, I it's, love that. It, it, it's a platform to, to share multiple stories. Right. So yes, for me, it, um, I, I'm next uh, a month and a half. I'm coming up on my four year anniversary of doing it. So my oh, two wow. hundredth episode, right? Wow! I never thought I'd reach so many countries, but it's oh, it's you, amazing. You, you know, for me, uh, you kind of you wake up and you go, okay, I'm a salesperson, right? That's what I've been doing for right. thirty years. I've been management and this and that, but yeah, yeah. But God forbid when 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 I pass, right? They're just going to hire another salesperson to replace me. <laughs> I mean, so true. It's just, I mean, you know, it is so and the, true. And, 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 and my my stores, my accounts, my friends, big. Like, oh, he was a great guy, and right? then move on. Yes. But, but with with the podcast, and it's kind of like with your public speaking, you're never going to know exactly how many people you affect because they're, they're not going to come up to you necessarily. But in three years, when they're dealing with the life issue, they're they're going to have that seed that you planted in them, mm. and. and and th and you'll never know about it, Lindsay. You'll never hear it. That's so true. And, and, you know, I think that's too, like with what you're doing with your podcast, you know, unless until people start really watching it and tune into it and they hear stories of all these incredible inspiration stories, you know, I've been following it for a long time now. And I see the people that you're interviewing the different stories. It to me is just so inspiring and so uplifting to see the different things that people are doing on their journey and their lives, sure. making a difference for other people, whether they even know that they're doing it or not. And, you know, once again, I think this just goes back, like even with your podcast, Absolutely. like you were doing something outside of sales to help other people. Cause you're taking your shift off of your full-time career and something that you're passionate about. You love interacting with people. You mm -hmm. love interviewing people. And so I'm thrilled that I'm, I'm thrilled that we have stayed connected all of these years. Yeah, and I've yeah. seen you and Hey, real quick. I, I want to ask because I've been meaning to ask okay. you what's going on with the, um, the motor coach. Is that the travel winds new little mascot? <laughs> I, I, it's going to be the, uh, it's pretty cool. We're, it. we're, we're, we're taking it to Vegas this, this weekend. Oh, anyway. wow. But, and, uh, but I'm going to use it for work and I'm also uh -huh. hoping to, uh, so it, it, I won't have to pay for the hotel fees anymore. Yes. So, you know, cause as, as a, I mean, I travel I, not as much as I did pre-COVID, but it's getting back to it's getting back to those those kind of numbers on the road, and yeah. uh, it, it's going to be I maybe a little bit of I, I'm going to try and set up some podcasts uh, uh -huh. from the from the road. That'll be interesting, I think. 
I think it will be great for you. And, yeah. you know, not only that, you're, you're out on the road, you get to go to different, you know, little RV camps. I mean, think of the incredible people you get yeah. to meet as you're traveling with your podcast and all the different interview people that you could just be interviewing, like even if they're on vacation or what is their story? How did they survive COVID? Have they been traveling this whole time? I, I think yeah. it's a, a different way of living too, and a different type of um, experience opposed to like, the hotels and stuff. I mean, after a while, which, it which gets I've kind done for decades. <laughs> right, right, right. Literally decades. Yeah. Right. So. Well, this is exciting. Well, I can't wait to see your setup and stuff and your cameras. And you should do a documentary on it. I think it would just be so, so inspiring. Like, you know, you're just traveling down the road and it says the travel winds. And so they're like, there he goes. Pete's on his way. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. It's going to be, a, it's going to be a fun journey though. I mean, it is going to, I'm excited for you. That yeah. is just so wonderful. And you know, the other thing too, what we're talking about right now, isn't it great to just dream and to have dreams and to have a new passion and like a new idea bloom and I think that's, you just that's plant the little seed that. like you said and you're just blooming it into something bigger and better or brighter or more impactful or more inspiring Absolutely. you know I yeah, think that's I, what life's about well I talk to Wendy a lot about that is you know like because we're roller skating still even though I won't be I for a few that. weeks I love that I love but it I think you know because I'm I'm younger than you uh, by, oh, you are just years, a little bit. <laughs> by a few years. Uh huh. Because we're doing that in reverse, right? Yes, yes, we are. We're aging backwards. Yes, yeah. we are. Don't forget it. We so stopped I'm, so, counting. So I'm we younger stopped than counting you. at 32. <laughs> now, 36 was a good age because you know what? I knew. <gasps> I got it. I just got it, Pete. 36. So 36 forever. <laughs> there you go. So I'm, yes. again, I'm a little young, but I, I, I really feel doing new things is what keeps, I mean, you don't look your age. I don't feel like I look my age and no, I get told you don't. that, but, you don't. but I think it's because I'm doing the podcast. I'm doing the roller skating. I'm doing, I'm, I'm not just doing the same old thing where you just kind of, you're doing interesting things, things that you're passionate about, yeah. things that excite you that well, there's photography or what, you know, whatever. Oh yeah. I saw your photography is amazing. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. But, but, but keep your, keep your brain fresh, you know, trying yes. to do things. And, and yeah, you know, I love learning. I think that's why I'm always studying and getting new certifications. I love yeah. to push my, my, my limits, my limit. I don't have any limitations. What's the word? I love to push myself to excel for new challenges. I love to learn. I love to grow. You know, knowledge is power. I always was raised by my dad with this entrepreneur spirit type of mind yeah. that knowledge is power. Don't ever stop studying your craft, your passion, or something of interest to you. And I really think that there's a lot to be said about that. Agreed. And yeah, I think people just, I think people get to a certain age and they think, oh, I'm, I'm retired. I'm supposed to just sit around. No, you're just going to rot and die. No, go and keep living. So you're not dying. Let's just like live our best life now and learn, you know, cultivate growth and change. And I look at it and go, look at the experiences you and I have had, right? Uh huh. In our advanced younger ages. <laughs> you know, and we should be able to share that, right? You know, I think and, so too. And people can learn from us yeah. too. Absolutely. And, and I still learn stuff. I, 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 I've had a couple guests in their twenties and you know, I'm not the old wise man. I'm, I'm the, I still want to learn. So. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I love that. And I love that you're pushing yourself to learn and it makes us much uh, more interesting people. I think too, you know, we've got yeah. things to talk about and you, you know, you got your new rollerblading to talk about. Is it roller skating, skating. or roller blade? Skating, quads, yeah, because yeah. that's on the four walls, the yeah. four wheels, yeah. <laughs> the four walls. You might be on those walls soon. <laughs> I'm trying, that's, but uh, I'm falling. So I think that's so great. A couple years back, I got some rollerblades. Whoo, that was scary. I had to take them back. I almost broke my neck. I was like, no, no, this is not for me. <laughs> See, and I didn't learn that lesson. I fall and go, oh, I got to get back up. Uh, that's even better. I love it. I don't know. <laughs> I've had some, some good injuries. I'm dealing with a knee right now that that's a, a little bruised. <coughs> you fell on it? Yes. Yeah, I've got a torn meniscus right now. So you be careful because that's not any fun. Sweetie. I'm more worried about the tendons. That's what I get worried about. Like like right now I'm dealing with, um, we believe is a burst bursa sac. 
on, okay. my, on my patella. Okay. So it's do sore. they? Yeah. So you have to ice and heat. Are you in PT? Um, are no, they no, telling you like? No. So, well, I can help you with some exercises. So if you, if you want me to, I'll shoot a little video for you and I'll show you sit and be fit. You just need to sit and extend your legs out. You need to do certain things with it to move the mobility around your knee, your patella and keep it strong. You know, that all comes with stretching and flexibility and agility movements, like but the wife. right kind of movements. I know. Right. You sound Sounds like complicated. Wife. No, you sound like my wife. <laughs> stretch pilates that's what you need to do pete yoga I if i only knew a good in pilates instructor oh gee hmm, i wonder wendy nah. <laughs> no i said a good one she is a great one what are you talking about she doesn't listen to my episode so it's okay <laughs> now I've... you're getting back at her she's gonna hear this you're gonna be in the dog house woof, I know. Woof. I know. that's all right that's a good dog house to be in Yes, right. <laughs> so, oh, what, I love it. So you got a lot coming up in the next few months, it looks like. I do. So I'm going to be in this this book, Blue Business Life Universe, coming up. It's uh, it's um, with Corey Poirier, Poirier, and I think that's how you say his last name. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to be sharing my first chapter in my book called Live Inspired Through Faith and Fitness. And it's basically about being on the stage because, you know, from this, from this, what happened, I competed two years ago, like just yeah. out of the blue, I was so allergic to all these foods. So I did some shows and anyway, I'm talking about that and about how I just kind of healed through the journey. So I've got that coming up. Um, and then I was in an interview for that. And then, um, I have the, well, I'm here with you right now. So yeah. this is such an honor. So thank you. And, and very incredibly blessed that to be able to talk right now and share this. And then I am working on uh, publishing my own book, but man, if we, if we all could just write a book, we would all be writing a book. It's very, very difficult. It takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, but I'm hoping to have it. I really, my goal is April, 2023. I don't know why I'm shooting okay. for that. Cause I think I've got a lot coming on with this certification program I'm taking. I'll be going to a conference in August and um, I just recently became a brand ambassador for a couple of companies. So right. I'm working on, you know, plugging and promoting them, you know, and being this influencer on social media. And, you know, uh, my Instagram page is private. My Facebook page is pretty private too. So I'm just kind of networking and connecting with those that I connect with. Sure. I think life is about that. I don't really want to be so much far out there as a public figure, but with this book coming I'm, out I'm and the these interviews, way. I think I'm going to, yeah, I think we're just going to be out there and it's just going to, the chips are going to fall as they, as they may. And you know, whatever comes our way is going to come our way, but yeah. I'm excited for you and I'm excited for me and I'm excited for this field. I think that there's a huge need for speakers right now and people just to share, you know, share your story. You know, yep. people are dying for inspiration right now. They are dying to hear something other than what they're going through. And um, it's really a great time to do it, to become a life coach, a speaker, maybe just even personal development. You want to dive into yourself and, you know, discover new things about yourself. I just, we should never stop growing is, is I guess what I'm getting at. You know, we yeah. should always continue to uh, push ourselves and, and learn and grow. That's how we become more interesting. And, and also that's how we um, become more alive in life. Like, look, you and Wendy, you're learning how to, to, to roller skate again. <laughs> the RV, I'm telling you. And you got the RV and you know, you've Man. got this international podcast. And like when you started it, it started as a little tiny seed. And now you're like, oh my God, what did you say? You're in 200. Did you say 200? No, no. 100, 157 countries have now listened to the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Oh, my God. I'm talking. I think I'm in one. <laughs> no, you know, it. I, it's bizarre because I look up the uh, – I, I was just listening to somebody in Montserrat listen to my show, which is a new country. Really? Which is a, an, a British exchange island in the wow. uh, Caribbean that, I mean, it just – like why would, they're not listening for me they're listening to my guest and having great guests is the key to they're it all listening to you too they're Pete. Absolutely so give not. credit where credit is they're due yes they not. are no yes way. they are no, it's yes. no, no one in Montserrat is going man that Pete guy I can't wait to hear I can't wait to hear his next show they do they say they do hey not. 
that guy with the travel wins. His they, name they is go, Pete. Let's they call go, him. They go, hey, uh, Maxie Priest, the Grammy-winning reggae singer, uh, did a show. Let me listen to it. Oh, that Pete guy, yeah, whatever. Oh, my gosh. Guarantee okay. it. Okay. Whatever. Well, hey, listen, they're on your show. And so they're connecting to connect to connect. Absolutely. So everybody's pulled together. So I'm pretty sure that they're going to look and say, oh, look, it's it's Pete. I don't even know how to say your last name. Kotz, Kotzbach. There you go. That's actually good. <laughs> Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're... Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. OK, Pete Kotzbach. <laughs> Closer. Closer? Okay, how do you say it? Uh, it's Kotzbach. It's very, Kotzbach. Very German, yeah. Pete Kotzbach. Um, do you know that Haygood is German too? So I'm part German, part Portuguese. See, I'm, I'm half Irish, quarter German, and quarter Hungarian. Wow. But the, but the last name came from my dad and his, his grandpa, so. I love the- it. And when people know how to pronounce it, they don't even know how to pronounce my name. They say Haygood. No, it's spelled that way, but it's pronounced hey good, like hey, hey she's good. good. <laughs> hey good. And that's why I went back to my my birth name, Hey Good, opposed to Higgins, because it just sounds, you know, more exciting and like, wow, what's this name? <laughs> we, we just get rid of the hey part and just Lindsay Good. Lindsay Good. <laughs> there you go. You're cute. Oh, thank there you. you. <laughs> So what's the best way from my, how do you want my, my listeners to, to stay in touch with you? Cause you, you're just well, saying like some, some are private and all that, but yes, yes, yes. So I'm, I'm coming out with my website, lindsayhaygood.com. So that will be a great resource and way for them to connect with me. Okay. They also can connect uh, with me by email, Lindsay Haygood. That's L I N D S E Y H A G O O D at yahoo.com and they can also even reach out to me they can send me a text um, about speaking or about um, helping uh, them navigate their path through uh, illness to wellness or just life stuff and my number is 850-533 oh you don't want to give out your phone number on this oh i don't okay (laughs) let's not do that because i was thinking that now i don't want a lot of crazy texts they can email me and they can look me up on my website they can also send me a message on messenger so there there we have it and they can reach out to you i'll just like have you be like the go-to person yeah yeah we we don't (laughs) pretty blondes don't need to give out their phone number thank you thank you for catching me i know i was thinking don't give out my phone number i am going to get um no, I'm not even going to do that. I'm just not going to say that. I've had bad experiences. They, they can reach so. out to you. Yeah, yeah. They can reach out to me. Email, social media. I'm on Facebook, Lindsay Haygood. I've got a public page called Live Inspired Through Faith and Fitness on Facebook. They can also reach out to me on IG, Instagram, uh, Live Inspired Faith Fitness, Lindsay Haygood. Just type it in. They'll find me. They'll see yeah. my photo, request me, and I will accept. Um, and then if they have uh, they need help or they want help, just send me a message and we'll go from there. That makes it a lot easier, right? Yes. And, and I'll, I'll put all the links on my page, on, on, okay. your, on, on the episode page, so they can just okay, wonderful, make wonderful. it, well, make it thank as you. simple as possible. Yes. Keep it simple, sweet is my saying. Kiss. Not keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, sweet. <laughs> That's not what my coach said. <laughs> He said, oh keep it simple, stupid. stupid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't like that word. It just sounded negative. So, yeah. and it was, but, it was meant to be that way. <laughs> but, 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 but the saying is true, you know, keep it, keep it simple, keep it simple. stupid. Yeah. Keep it simple. Just keep it simple. I think we yeah. make things too complicated and it's not necessary. Yeah. At all. <laughs> no. Well, hey, thank you so much for your time today. Aww. This is awesome. Well, thank you. It was great to reconnect with you. It was great to talk to you about the travel winds and what you're doing is awesome. And thank you for having me as a guest. I really appreciate it. It's going to be great. I I get, see, I'm like the, the preview before you become this world famous public speaker. (gasps) Oh my gosh. Travel. (laughs) That makes. We'll we'll have to do a follow-up when you start traveling for all the public speaking events. Oh my gosh. And I might have to hire you and just travel on the travel winds, you know, motor coach. I'll be your hype man. (laughs) I would love that. That would be so fun. But oh my God, all of that makes me nervous. I'm just going to be who I am. And yeah, yeah. Well, yeah you can be it anyways. Is what, that's right. It is what it is. And hopefully it, it connects to somebody who just needs to hear the message. And yep. 
You know, everything in life's about timing and maybe I'm at the right place at the right time. I, yeah. I wanted to be a speaker, you know, that Pete for years and years, and I just couldn't find my voice. And now I found this tragic story. It <laughs> happened to you. My, yeah. I, it happened to me and I never thought, Oh, this happens to other people. No, this happened to me. It's very real. And it's, it's surreal. Yeah. Well, thank I'm just, uh, thank you. I know what you're saying when you say that it's very amazing. I dodged a rare cancer too, that they never talked about. The doctors would never speak about. I was so sick. I couldn't even figure it out, but you know, I navigated my own recovery. I did it my way and I think I'm doing pretty great. So I'm in gratitude. Like your shirt says that you wore today, which is so special just for me. So I'm in gratitude for you and for your friendship. And thank you so much for your support. You got it. We'll stay in touch. And, uh, okay. That was fun. Thanks, Lindsay. That was, that was so fun. I'll talk to you soon. 